Welcome. Um, these are the five myths about setting up and building and expanding your functional medicine practice. So um, let's get going here. Uh, the next slide is just the disclaimer. So, you know, like with everything, I'm going to give you the best information possible, but always do your own research, especially when it comes to some of the legal stuff that might be specific to your license or your state or your country, because I'm not going to know the nitty gritty rules, um, you know, from South Africa to Canada to UK to, you know, New Jersey. So just make sure you check those things out. Um, okay, here's what to expect today. I'll do a quick intro for me. Um, here are the five myths. I'll make a fortune selling supplements. I can't start my practice until I'm ready. I hear that all the time. And that sort of goes a little bit with imposter syndrome. So if people want to talk about that, I hear that question a lot. We can certainly dive in there. Um, I have to pick a practice niche or an ideal patient. Now, sometimes that's helpful. We can talk about when that's a good thing, but you don't have to do that. And I'll explain why and how to still, um, you know, bring people in even when you don't pick that. Can someone also give me a thumbs up that you are seeing the slides, post something in the chat? That would be great. Um, all right, labs are complicated. Thank you, thank you so much. Labs are complicated and I will need extensive training before I order them. I love labs with a passion. I love teaching about them. And, you know, especially my colleagues here who have gone through IFM, which is one of my favorite courses. I'm uh, certified IFM CP. There's such a huge volume of knowledge and so many opportunities for things to do, but you have to have great systems and get dialed down to the specifics. Here's the patient. This is what they say. Here's what you find. Here's what you need to order. This is what that lab means. And here's what you do um, as your next step moving forward. So it just has to be quick and easy. And I love teaching that part. So um, labs are a wonderful tool and they, they do not need to be crazy complicated at all. Um, everything from how you order them to what you do with them. So we'll talk a bit about that. Um, and this is my favorite one. Um, I'm a doctor, not a business owner. Or if you're a nurse or a nutritionist, whatever your license is, who's, who's on the line here. Um, gosh, that's just such a wake up call. So that's a fun one to talk about. That's my favorite one. And then I'll talk a little bit about what's next if you want more support, and then we'll do our live Q&A. Okay, so let's um, dive in here. Um, oh, that was my slide to tell you a little bit about me. Uh, the topics always interest me so much. Um, but all right, if I'm new to you, as I said, my name is Dr. Zachary and my clinic is Body Love Cafe. If you wanna check it out here, I'll just put a link. Uh, we, I did the website myself, so every time I see it, I see all the mistakes and the things that could be better, but it works. It's high converting, and um, that's really what matters, and we get the right types of patients and patients who understand what to expect. So could it always be better? Yes, but that's part of, you know, moving forward when we get to, I think it's myth number two. Um, is taking imperfect action, right? Plus things evolve over the time. I've had that website for about five, almost five years now. And of course it's evolved over the years, um, but you're welcome to check it out. There's some good resources or things you might like or not like to model after. So that's that. Um, my, my sort of like catch all where I put everything else is Doc Zachary. It just has some basic information, the, um, the training courses I provide and some private coaching. Uh, there's a really co cool freebie there for people who like things. There's a, a communication freebie as a practitioner to a patient that has definitely helped me a lot in practice. So you're welcome to grab it and use that if you find that helpful. Um, how I came to functional medicine is my license was as a DC going back 20 years now. And I was actually put out of practice by a car accident and 
had two different styles of practices. Um, and one was quite big, full insurance and PI and workers comp and Medicare and going to court for patients and fighting for them and, and all of that. And then in the middle, when I couldn't practice anymore, had a completely different career and did some executive consulting with about 20,000 clients. A lot of them were in the health and wellness field. Um, I would teach marketing and branding and sales and speaking. And I also created the world's first um, visual personality profiling system. And that was published by McGraw-Hill out of New York. So I was very busy. It was a lot of fun. I thought, well, that's just going to be my career from now on. But I got very sick. And like a lot of us who are drawn to functional medicine, it's usually something that happened to us. And so for me, I was so sick. Those of you in Western medicine, you, you might know of the primary immunodeficiency disorder, CVID, uh, common variable immunodeficiency, uh, genetic and some other possible causes, no known cure. And I was declared permanently disabled and I would um, get IVIG in the infusion center with the cancer patients every three weeks at the local hospital. Um, social security disability, lost everything, had to move home with my mom. And I was a single mom myself for 15 years. So it was a very, you know, humbling is the nice way to say it. Absolutely nightmarish experience is the more accurate way to, to describe it. And um, I was just told that was my life. I never felt good. I had seven different specialists who wouldn't communicate to each other. I was on eight prescriptions. Um, my just the IVIG was over 700,000 a year and I paid 20 grand for it and I never felt well. So that's how I found functional medicine. I used that um, to return to the land of the living, getting off disability is a big deal. Starting over is a big deal. So I'm a big fan of starting a practice with as little to no debt as possible. Um, I'm a fifth generation female entrepreneur. So I've started many businesses and made six multiple seven figure incomes without any debt. I didn't even have credit cards for 18 years. So I really know how to do that. And, um, and I was starting from nothing. When I started Body Love Cafe, it was just me, a hundred square feet in a tiny little room. And within the first year I had to expand twice and move because the growth was so fast, zero paid advertising. And I went to uh, 1,400 square feet, 22 walls, and multiple practitioners. Um, I'm about to go on a month sabbatical. So excited for that. Um, we have multiple practitioners from MD, DC, registered dietitian, health coaches, um, body workers, energy workers, a whole range of people. And now after seeing thousands of patients, I get to be in the role of clinical director. Um, and my passion is teaching and doing private coaching and consulting. So very excited to have it evolve um, exactly the way I hoped it would. So that's my short and long story. Hopefully that's enough. If you have questions, let me know, but I wanna get to the exciting stuff. Okay, number one, myth number one, I'll make a fortune selling supplements. Now, I think that's what every, um, you know, supplement rep wants you to think. Just carry my line and you will make a fortune. And it sounds like a good money maker in the beginning. Oh, you get to make 50%. But the truth is, is that supplements are one of your tools in functional medicine. And it's a very valuable tool, but it's not a money maker, particularly in the beginning. It really sort of just pays for itself. And I think it's important to have that understanding and that perspective so that you price everything appropriately. Um, some people learn the hard way by, you know, underpricing, thinking they're going to make this money with supplements and then they don't. Um, I'm also a big fan of never, you know, having you feel like you're in the role of a salesperson. I have so many different ways I can teach people to start, including no inventory. I know colleagues who, you know, they spent 15 to $50,000 on a supplement inventory. And, and quite frankly, it's not necessary at all. So like I said, 
Um, I'm the queen of getting started on a shoestring uh, budget. I, as, as a longtime business owner, I like you to be profitable from day one. That's what I've done with every business I've ever had. And right now I run four businesses. So it's possible. Um, and especially for those of you who want to do a virtual practice with drop shipping and links. Now, I know some of you are big fans of full script and well, you've ate. I am not. And you might find that surprising. Um, I don't think they pay well enough for the effort. So I'm not a fan. I do have full script. And I will order through Emerson at times, but not through Wellubate, just through the back end of Emerson. Otherwise, I have specific brands that I recommend, um, and I teach all the details in Functional Medicine Academy and with my private coaching clients. But let me tell you what I'm looking for. This is my criteria. Um, number one, I want a supplement line that's very good quality, so I get the results I can count on. Um, they source well, you know, I want good uh, omega oils, I want, um, if it, there's hemp products, that has to be sourced well, um, certificates of authenticity, I want methylated B vitamins, right, we want, I want good quality, I don't want junk, I want it gluten free, I want it non GMO, all of those types of things. So quality is number one, results I can count on, but then they must also have the company must have good customer service. They must drop ship quickly and offer either a low shipping cost or free at a, um, a certain threshold that's reasonable for uh, patients. And part of why I want that good customer service is because I want less work for my office staff. Or for those of you that are brand new and you're doing everything, less work for yourself. So that's very important. That's the first thing I look for. Um, and then the other thing I look for is uh, that they pay well, right? So people pay all different things and Wellyvate and Fullscript give 35%. I don't consider that enough, quite frankly. Um, if you look at a retail store, there's an old saying in retail, you double the price to break even and you triple the price to make a profit. Um, well, some people triple the price of supplements. I, I don't do that. Um, but you have to at least be able to have that 50% mark just to break even in the beginning. That's the reality. And then the, the supplement company, I, I really like the best. There's a lot of other bonuses and you can actually make above 50%. So I'm looking for those types of things. And then you don't have to give a discount to patients, but I like to offer a discount for patients. I even have a health savings plan in my office that offers an extra discount to patients. And so I need a supplement company that gives enough wiggle room that I can offer that, which is helpful for patient loyalty. It's helpful for them to get what they need to get well, um, but still covers costs. So takes care of the patient, takes care of the supplement company, takes care of the clinic. So those are the, some of the things I'm looking for. And you have to be careful not to get distracted by every bright, shiny light out there. So we use probably 25 different companies, but this is what it looks like. One company that's that we use 90% of the time. And then that other like five to 10% of the time, we probably custom order through Emerson because in that back end, you can get a variety of brands. It's easier, it ships together, it's a clearing house. And most of the items are at a 50% price point, not all of them, but most. Um, and then every now and then there's that specialty item we need, we can't get it anywhere else and we, we just order it. And then the other thing I'm looking for is, we, I know a lot of you are interested in a virtual practice. And I used to be just old school brick and mortar clinic. My last business was very much, you know, um, online and virtual. So I was looking for something different at the time. And I could order from seven different companies, have it mailed to my clinic and hand it off to the patient. Well, now I do almost everything virtual and that's just really not possible without me feeling like UPS, you know, a, a private drop ship center. 
And that stuff will make you crazy fast. You don't want that. So I'm also looking for companies that allow me to have an e-store. If I'm going to give a discount, I want a discount code that I can give to my patients and they can order directly. If I have senior citizens that are not computer savvy, we have staff that can help them. But otherwise, it's very much in the patient's hands. Um, we're not salespeople. We don't, um, you know, we could be, but I have zero interest in that. I don't ever want, um, I don't ever want to feel like I need to sell something off of a shelf. I want to always be in a position where I'm giving the best recommendation for a protocol. I will explain to the patient why I'm, why I'm recommending it, but it's in their hands. So there's zero pressure for them to get things. I think this is very important for good customer service, for building trust, for patient retention, for practitioners to sleep well at night. Um, and I know a lot of people see the gurus out there that are white labeling things. And some of you really want to white label. And if you do, I can talk to you about that. I purposely do not white label because as soon as you white label a product, let's say I had the Body Love Cafe uh, glutathione, you know, now I'm a salesperson. Now I'm trying to sell our product. Whereas the role I'm in now is I get to just be the practitioner. I need, I can make a recommendation. And then um, let's say I, cause this has happened before. Let's say I have a supplement company I really like and they change their manufacturing processes. And I don't feel like they're doing as good of a job. Well, on a dime, I can change to another company. It's no skin off my back. It doesn't slow down the business at all. If anything, it keeps that patient's trust. And I always want that flexibility. So um, now, as far as building income with uh, supplements, I'll just tell you what I was doing now. I would only see patients two half days a week. I can tell you why that is. Um, but setting up the structure of when you work and when you see patients is very important to have a happy practitioner. So for me, I would only see patients from one to six on Tuesday and Wednesday. And just with that little bit, um, we would profit maybe about 8K a month in supplements after giving discounts, after being very non-salesy and after having them just order it themselves. So you can build up residual income um, with supplements, but it takes time. And anyone who pretends it starts out that way is not giving you good information. It took years to build up to that kind of level. So the what you can expect and this is doing it, you know, in an ethically honest way, is that as you go, it should pay for itself. And what I mean by pay for itself is it should pay for the effort involved. Um, so when it was just me, it brought in enough to cover my time as, you know, very quickly I needed staff. Um, you know, within six months, I'd have staff. It just took off so fast. It was so busy. I was drowning without having staff. And then I had to have more staff three months later and then, you know, more. And I think we have eight now, but um, it should pay for the staff members to do their work. Because as you add more patients and you grow and then they need more supplements and they need more meal plans and they need more labs and they have more email and more phone, it takes more work. And so that's what I mean is it should cover that. And so it's more realistic that in the beginning and the first couple of years of growth, you will make money from supplements to fund your growth so you won't be in debt. And then you will hit a threshold where it will build um, expected profit, but it doesn't start that way. Okay, so hopefully that's a pretty thorough answer for that. And if there's any questions, you can shoot them over. I know some people were joining us late. So you can shoot them over in the chat box, ask it so everyone can see it or message me privately in chat or wait till the end and we'll do questions then. Okay, myth number two, I can't start my practice until I'm ready. So a lot of people feel that way. 
there are some basics to getting ready, but no, um, you don't have to wait till you're ready. What most people mean when they think that is um, until they know everything and you're never going to know everything. That's part of the wonderful thing about functional medicine. And as new patients come in, they're going to drive your learning and your growth. Someone's going to come in, it's going to be something you don't know. You may need to refer them out, but a lot of times you might say to them, you know, I haven't come across that yet. Let me see what I can find out. And then you're going to do some research. And part of why they're coming to see you is not because they expect you to know everything, but because you're the translator. You're the one that's going to take a complex subject. You have the advanced medical knowledge. You're going to figure it out and synthesize it in a way for them um, and turn it into English language, something they can understand. And you're the only practitioner, even if let's say they are a complex case and they have a GI doc and an endocrinologist and an oncologist in their life and a dermatologist, you know, they have a lot going on. You may still be the only person who's looking at everything. And even with these other specialists, you're the hub that they keep coming back to, to help them understand what's going on, put it together, big picture, natural practices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so anyway, you know, if you do it right, you can be uh, very, very uh, busy. Um, the other thing I hear I can't start my practice until I'm ready is sometimes people getting certain licenses. And the truth is, is if you're eager to get started, um, and sometimes we have to have like a more detailed conversation about this, depending on what your license is. Um, but sometimes it makes sense for you to get started as a health coach or a nutritionist and start seeing patients and build your practice and do it slowly over time and not have pressure. And then as you complete your degree or your license, that's just another feather in your cap. You've already been building a community of um, patients and or clients and being known in the public. And then you're able to announce, you know, I just got such and such, or I just completed such and such, or you finished something that now allows you to prescribe or now allows you to do IV therapy or, you know, whatever it is that you're working on. But do you have to wait till you have everything? Quite frankly, you don't. And I think starting the sooner the better because it is such a wonderful learning curve. Um, but some of the things to be ready with, sort of the basics, and it doesn't mean it can't change and evolve along the way. It's just ideal if you get it right from the start. And this is why I love especially coaching people in the beginning or if they're reinventing, you know, they're a surgeon and now they're going into functional medicine or they were a radiologist or they were a chiropractor or they um, were an acupuncturist or something and sometimes just even what they have to wrap their head around, you know, seeing themselves as the functional medicine practitioner and they have all these different tools in their toolbox. So um, some of the things you want to try to get right from the beginning is the name of your functional medicine practice. And there's pros and cons to naming it after yourself versus a general name. We could always talk about that. Um, some type of logo, a basic website that includes who you are, you know, your bio and history. Again, doesn't mean these can't evolve. Um, describing a bit about what you do, what the patient or the client working with you can expect. So it's very important that you manage expectations. Um, that's very important for happy people. Um, and, you're, and you're not like you can keep everyone happy all the time, but certainly the vast majority. Um, and then a, a list of services or a menu of services. I'm a big fan of having prices right up front, full disclosure, full transparency. And a lot of gurus out there will say, don't do that. But if you don't do that, that puts you in the role of having sales calls. And who wants to do that? Unless you're one of my private coaching clients that says, I want a concierge practice. I want everyone who comes in the door, they're gonna drop $5,000 right from the front. 
then we're going to set it up differently. Okay. And you are going to have sales conversations, but otherwise most people running a clinic, you want as little barrier to care as possible. You want to make it as affordable as possible for them to get in, but also you have to justify not only your time because you don't want to be in a situation where you feel resentful because you've underpriced it, um, but you need to cover all your expenses and make a profit. So pricing is very important. I can talk a bit about, you know, when you increase pricing and supply and demand, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I like having prices right up front. You'll see it on our website. And that way um, people know what to expect. And if someone truly, you know, thinks they can't afford that at all, then you're, they're going to say no and go to another office. And that's fine because there's plenty of people out there who need help. Let them find another office that's more in their price range um, instead of wasting your time or the staff's time having a conversation when that's a barrier to begin. Okay, myth number three, um, I have to pick a practice niche or an ideal patient. So this is like, um, I'm gonna specialize just in thyroid. I'm gonna be the thyroid care office, or I'm gonna uh, specialize in serving runners. Okay, I'm a marathoner myself. I, I'm not, by the way, I'm pretending to be you. Um, I don't run. If I got chased, I would have to turn and negotiate. Uh, it's nothing else I could do. Um, but I'm going to specialize in runners or something like that. And you can do that. We can come up with clever names. Uh, it can be a good marketing tool. We can certainly attract a certain person. I can teach you how to do that. However, you don't have to do that. And if people tell you you have to, that's not accurate. There's a couple different ways to do it. Um, one about the practice niche. When I started Body Love Cafe, I purposely, even though I've helped so many people do an ideal client, um, I purposely didn't do um, a specific niche because I didn't know what I'd want to do. I wanted sort of a little bit of this, that, and the other to see what I was most interested in. And I really love gut health. That's definitely one of my specialties. I just taught a SIBO masterclass. If you haven't seen it, um, check it out. There's a great handout, um, you know, help yourself to it. Uh, very, very detailed. And that, that's not even the practitioner version. I teach the practitioner version in Functional Medicine Academy. That's still the patient public version, but out of a thousand people, over 300 were doctors, um, you know, watching this because it was very detailed. Um, so I love gut health for sure because of the crap I've had to deal with, um, you know, thyroid health, heart health. Um, it's fun making babies, it's fun uh, working with babies, elderly. So what I really found for myself was that I liked the variety and I would have been too bored to just pick one specialty. That's me. But if you're like that, I just want you to know you don't have to have um, a single specialty. You can build one out, you can be a generalist and attract different people. And then at different times of the year, you can put certain information out into the public. Let's say you're talking about heart health, you're gonna get more heart health patients at that time. You know, and then maybe a couple months later, you're talking more about thyroid health, you're gonna have a swell of thyroid patients. You know, that's typically how it works. Um, as far as an ideal patient, you don't have to have an ideal patient, but for that, the way I recommend it is you could do, you know, just runners or whatever. Um, and to say women like age 35 to 55, that's too general. That's pretty much all of functional medicine. So if you're going to pick an ideal patient, you can, and we can use it as a marketing tool. Otherwise, what I prefer is if you go to doczachary.com and you download the free resource, you're going to see these six character codes. That's from um, what got published with McGraw-Hill. And that's what I use for an ideal patient. Uh, two ways I use it. One is, first of all, know who you are. So just for fun, not that we're not all complex because we are, but who are you? What are your personality strengths? What are your challenges? That, that freebie's a short version 
you know, shorter than the published book, but it's still quite detailed. So it's good to, you know, know thyself. And then what kind of patient would you ideally like to work with from a personality standpoint? And so that's what I did was pick the patient I wanted. And about 80% of the people coming in fit my model. And my website, if you look at my website, Body Love Cafe, it has a distinct look to it. It's designed to attract that type of patient and the language and the pictures and the colors. And when I had the physical clinic, now we use two smaller physical clinics. Um, and it's great, cost next to nothing. I don't even have to decorate it. But when I had the bigger clinic, I loved it. It was certainly a labor of love and as cute as can be, but it was designed a certain way to attract that ideal client that I wanted. And they loved it. They loved hanging out in there. So, you know, whether you have an office that looks slick and medical or high end, or it's looks, you know, Eastern and, you know, um, Buddha's everywhere, or it looks like a cozy living room with overstuffed chairs, sofa chairs. However you set that up, um, don't get caught in just doing what you like. And what you like is important, but who is it you want? Because that environment you create is going to attract that type of person. So that's the type of ideal patient or ideal client I recommend and very conscious. For those of you who do FMA1, um, I have handouts in there to walk you through this and how to pick it. Otherwise, just go grab that freebie resource and that should help you quite a bit. Hopefully that makes sense the way I'm describing it. If not, ask me some questions at the end. Okay, myth number four, labs are complicated and I will need extensive training before I order them. So it's interesting with labs. First of all, sorry, people are still popping in. I have to let them in. Um, first of all, the thing with labs is more and more now patients are having access to their own labs. They're typically not as good of quality or as detailed as the practitioner level. But um, especially for those of you who don't have a license that allows you to order medical labs, um, this trend is helpful. You're at least able to get some information and it's often in the patient's hands and they're gonna bring in labs and show them to you. And labs are getting better and better now that there's clinical reference guides or reports with them that are incredibly helpful. And by the time you've read that through a few times, um, you know, you should know it. If not, grab someone like me or someone you trust to like quickly walk you through. Here's what it means. Uh, here's what you need to do. I have some coaching clients. The vast majority have me help with practice and marketing and intake forms and staffing and patient flow and all of that. But I have some that use me just for clinical, clinical guidelines and reading labs. So I, I don't care. I'll help however someone wants. Um, the thing with labs, just like with supplements, don't get distracted by how many options there are out there because labs are like supplement companies. They're there to, you know, make a living and have a business and some can be quite similar. And so you certainly don't need three that do the same thing. You just have to pick your favorite and picking your favorite is a combination of good quality, good pricing, results you can count on, and also a report that you like, you feel comfortable with, and you can easily explain to the patient. So those are the things I look for with labs. Now, um, I'm geek enough that, <laughs> This is, this is a TMI moment, sorry. But um, I'm geek enough that I tested with the same stool sample, GI map, um, doctor's data and Genova stool test <laughs> um, and worked with each of their reps. My favorite is GI map. I'll just tell you the end story. And I love teaching that lab in detail. So each of these sort of categories, you're gonna have your favorite. My favorite for hormone testing is the Dutch. Um, and I've taught that if you haven't gotten it from me, if you're in the IFM group, I've posted it more than once. Uh, if you're on our email list, 
check one of the last emails where I sent out the link for the SIBO masterclass. Maybe it went to your spam if you haven't seen it. Um, but I think the subject line said like, here's this SIBO masterclass recording. I also put in a link for a free training like this that was all about the Dutch with the treatment booklet um, included, um, a, a free case review that covered GI map, Dutch, leaky gut testing in the form of advanced intestinal barrier assessment um, and allergy 88 testing. Um, I like allergy 88 the best because it tests um, IgE, IgG, IgG4, C3D. The report's good. I, I could talk a lot about that. Um, and what else did I give? Oh, I did a two hour free coaching call. It was a whole lot of different questions. So I gave that link. That's all in those emails. Um, so yeah, you have a set of labs that are your favorites you'll use over and over again. And then when you sometimes need a specialty lab that's outside your norm, you'll pick that. Uh, one thing I really like is Rupa Health. I know people have been talking about it more. One of the functional medicine groups I was in, they just said, oh, we just do it through our office because it's cheaper and Rupa Health charges. Um, I'm not connected to Rupa Health other than I use them and I love them. Um, uh, I have talked to the owner several times and told her what a good job I think they do, but um, they charge 7%. So if you have a $300 lab, that's around $20, right? It's next to nothing. And we have the patient cover the cost. And I always know something's good when I test it. And then my staff threatens mutiny if I were to cancel it. And they did. They said, I'm not allowed to mess with it. So before I used to have a staff member dedicated to labs. She would um, order all the labs. She would drop ship all the different lab test kits. She would get in all the portals and download the reports. I mean, it was just a lot of work. And so with Rupa Health, um, and I think the website, I could be wrong here, but I think it's rupahealth.com, easy peasy. And they're out of San Francisco, I'm in California, but they serve the whole US and soon I think they'll serve Canada, which if that's true, that would be fabulous. Um, or you might have another one local to you. It's essentially a lab clearing house. So the advantage is, um, you know, same types of things I'm looking for, good customer service and they offer good customer service. They have a low cost. You have the option of, sounds like I'm doing a commercial for them, but this is just my experience. You have the option of having the patient pay them directly. So if you did not want the money going through your office at all, um, you can do that. And there are cases when that makes sense. What I would say, quite honestly, have it go through your office and pay for all these things. Put a credit card on file that has a two or 3% cash back. Um, and you'll probably make 10 or 12 grand a year uh, cash back. And you can use that to cover office expenses or give your staff a bonus or, you know, whatever. Um, or, you know, so the patient can pay them directly. You're, other than you giving the order, you don't have to handle any money. Um, or you give them your credit card and um, you pay through the office. We've tested both. And we stick through pain through the office because of a number of reasons. One is it just helps us track better on our end. But otherwise, they have, you know, so many different labs. We have our favorites we use. Uh, we place the order that way. They drop ship the kits. Uh, they give instructions. So it's almost like having a free staff member. They help with the customer service. And they'll email us when the reports are in. Love that. And it's one portal we're, uh, we're looking. So instead of checking every different labs portal, we have one. It, it's worth it to us. Um, but, uh, but anyway, like I said, the, the big key is labs do not have to be complicated at all. You just need to know what they mean. Um, for those of you who do coaching with me, ask me for my lab guideline handout. Uh, I'll make sure you get it. This is something I created for the practitioners in my training and in my office. So for those of you that run multidisciplinary clinics, 
I, I recommend having something like this. But what I do is I list the top labs that we use, you know, let's say GI map, Dutch, um, blood work, things like that. And, um, and I say, the instructions that are in there, let's say we're going to order it, what kind of supplements or if there's food or special instructions do the patients need to avoid before ordering it and how long that's listed. Um, when the lab comes in, we use Jane app software, what handouts or chart templates need to be given with that lab report when it's released to the patient. It's listed right there with the exact name in alphabetical order. So there's no thinking, it's all systems, fast, 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 right? Um, what are the key markers you're looking for and the significance that's listed? You know, um, there's a lot of systems you have to create, you know, first for yourself, but then if you're gonna have other practitioners. So I've done all this. Um, and uh, what are some red flags? And then what are the common supplements we would use? Those types of things. So all of that is listed out. Um, okay, last one, my favorite. I'm a doctor, not a business owner. So for a lot of us or the nutritionist or whatever type of practitioner you are, right? A lot of us, you just want to be the practitioner. And some people, especially maybe if you come from a surgeon um, background or something like that, you might be more used to directing people or maybe you uh, were a chiropractor and you had your own business um, and you're used to running a business. But otherwise there's a lot of people, um, especially the touchy feely ones, right? The heart felt practitioners, they just want to like be the healer and they don't realize they're running a business. But whatever your personality or experience is, in functional medicine, we're all business owners. Even, and I tell this to my practitioners too, even though they've got that Body Love Cafe structure, I give training every week, I review labs and files with them every single week and answer questions, even though they have all that structure, they're still their own business owner. So to, to recognize that, and those of you that have, you're in practice by yourself or you run the clinic, um, they're very different hats to wear. And to understand that just the same way you have systems for patient care and um, how managing expectations, how your patients move through your office and your set of systems, and anything's possible. I certainly have my favorites that I think work well over the years, but it could be created any way you want. Um, but you also have to have those systems as the business owner. You have to have systems for your staff. It's not just HIPAA regulation. There's often OSHA. There's having to have a personnel manual. There's employee laws. Um, there's, um, oh gosh, what else? So uh, there's HR requirements. There's uh, for your website, there's uh, terms of services and privacy policies, um, things that have to be on there. Uh, just a lot of hoops to jump through. So the more you can either work with a coach or if you have a good buddy or I don't know, something so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. These are the types of things that I um, provide because you know I did it all from scratch and then evolved it over the time you know, over the years. And then if you feel comfortable starting right away, you can do that and then have an attorney review it later and tweak it. Or if you want an attorney to review all of your forms up front, you can do that. Sometimes it's a budget issue um, and your comfort level. Um, there's also other insurances. Some people think only of their malpractice or additional insurance for doing nutrition and coaching. But there's also other insurances, you know, um, usually your malpractice is errors and admissions, but sometimes you need an additional policy or you need a hazard policy, um, like a slip and fall, or you need a business property insurance. And then there's just the, the business of running a business. And this is part of why I recommend, when do you wanna see patients? And to cluster those, 
uncertain times because you're going to need days where you're completely off and you don't think about patients at all. And you're going to need days where you do staff meetings and days where you do marketing and days where you look at your numbers. Um, and some of you might be doing your own bookkeeping in the beginning, but even you know, I have a bookkeeper and a tax account and I have to manage these people. So even once you have help um, and you get more and more help, you still have to manage everyone and setting up systems. Cause just like how you don't wanna give patients your private cell number, because even five well-meaning patients who text you at 11 p.m. from the grocery store saying, is it okay for me to eat that? That'll make you bonkers. Um, the same thing is a bunch of staff members or virtual assistants um, all asking you questions without any guidelines will also make you crazy. Uh, it'll be too much coming at you all the time. So especially as you get bigger, you're going to want um, boundaries. So setting up good practices and systems for yourself so you understand, here's my hat when I'm practitioner. Here's my hat when I'm business owner dealing with systems and money, and, you know, finances, rules, all those hoops. Here's my hat when I'm the marketer and I'm in growth mode. And maybe I like doing creative things and, you know, that's when that hat's on. And then here's when all the business hats are off and I get to be mom or dad or um, be in the garden or, or whatever it is. So the, the better you can set that up um, from the beginning, the better you will be um, equipped to scale and grow because it's just gonna get more complicated as you grow. So things like what I, what I have because the team's so big is there's set hours that they know I will be available on video or phone to answer questions. Um, and they would only text me in a true emergency. And in fact, there's actually a hierarchy. So there's people that have other buffers in place, not just with patients. Like patients don't call or email me ever. They do, they go to the office and then the staff communicates with me. And even when I'm sending a message back, it goes through the staff. That's very intentional. So there's always a buffer, but I also do it with my staff. Um, so I have a specific person that I will talk to and then the rest of the staff member, um, they go through that buffer too. And then we have staff meetings and things like that. So these are very important for setting up a successful business where you can go the distance and have a life and be profitable and uh, have fun and not burn out or, or brown out. Okay, let's see what's next. Um, for those who do want support, I'm taking May off um, and my current coaching clients have me pretty booked next week. I might have a spot for a consult or something otherwise sort of the race is on to wrap up April. And I'm so excited. Um, that's the other thing when you have good systems is you get to then take May off. Like I'm off the grid. You won't see me. I won't be on social media. Um, I do not exist. My phone's actually going to be locked up and put away. So I'm so excited for that. So I get the month of May off. And then June, um, I can do coaching and consulting again. This summer, we'll have the functional medicine classes um, begin again. Those are fun. Um, you know, IFM is brilliant. That's not designed to replace IFM at all. Uh, these are very practical courses. One, the first one, I don't always teach them in order, by the way, but the first one is like practice setup and forms and sort of a lot of what we're talking about today, but much more detailed, the exam, the report of findings, choosing labs. Um, one is all about marketing. Love that class. That's a fun one. The rest are all clinical. So the other five. And some people just pick and choose what they like. Others take all of them and you can get certified. Um, do we have a payment plan? Yes. You can just pay for the class as you go. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's four seventy five dollars or something. But for those that want to do all of it and get certified, there's a pretty steep discount. And again, full disclosure, the price is on the website. 
So whatever it says on there is, is what it is. Um, and there is a bundle with coaching. So if you want more info, help yourself. Otherwise, I do a lot of freebie stuff too and, and try to help quite often that way. All right, that was a lot to just get out there, but this was designed for a quick call. I have two more uh, interviews I have to film today, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. So if you have anything on your mind, you can, um, and I think I might've missed one already. So let me see if I can grab it. You can uh, unmute yourself and ask it or just post it and I'm happy. Some per someone asked if I was recording today. God, I hope so, let's see. Um, first of all, there's mine. Okay, good, it was recorded. <laughs> Uh, nothing like doing a call and forgetting to record it. So uh, as long as the recording turns out, we will um, email it out next week. If you're not on our list, I mean, if you're here, you should be on our, our list. But if you're not on it and you want to receive it, let me just tell you who to email. Um, I'm just going to give you my assistance email, especially since I'm going to be gone in... Um, in May. So Rochelle at bodylovecafe.com. If you need something, just ask her. Um, she'll help you out. Um, what certification is being earned with the course? We have two. Uh, it's Functional Medicine Academy Certified Practitioner or Certified Coach. So it depends on your license. All the advanced medical and practitioner licenses can be certified practitioners. Um, those that are more in the coaching category can be a certified coach. Uh, the classes are the same, but the final test and case review is different. So it's appropriate for the license that the person has. Um, if you've gone through IFM CP, it's not as grueling as their case review or test by any means, um, but it's designed to make sure that if you're going to you know, use those letters and have our badges. We have badges you can use on your website and things like that, that demonstrate, you know, basically you put in the effort to, um, you know, learn this really practical information, then um, we just wanna make sure that you know it. So much easier test and case review, but uh, that is the final piece to have it. And those who aren't interested, but want a class or two, you can just pick and choose what you want. So for those who are interested, you can see it right at doczachary.com. There's also, let me see. That's probably the easiest way is just to go there. Um, another place you could see it if you're already on my website. As you can see it here. So either one. Okay, good. We got some practice questions. Let's look at those. Um, getting started with a virtual practice while having a chiropractic office. Should I use a separate chain software? Um, yes, especially if if you were keeping everything together, you could keep it together. But if you're in a situation where you think you might sell it or you're going to um, you know add a second location or or separate it in some way that I would not use the same software system if it's always going to stay together then it's perfectly fine to keep it together like our Jane software we have three locations in it and um, you know eight practitioners and they have different specialties so that's fine but otherwise if we're talking about two really different practices and you may or may not keep one you might be selling it then i would make it separate so once you answer that um, as far as a separate virtual assistant you know not necessarily if you have a really good virtual assistant uh, they can do a lot of things for you depending on on who they are the the issue that comes up is are they an employee or not? And for those of my colleagues in California, you know 
California changed the rules and it's very rigid about who is an employee and who's an independent contractor. So our practitioners are independent contractors and some of them have their own corporation and some of my practitioners are not even in the state, you know, same state, they're in other states. So then um, that's much easier to meet the criteria as an independent contractor, especially when you pay someone and you're paying another corporation. But um, staff that previously could have been independent contractors and were working virtually, um, I had to make employees. So, um, you know, it, 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 you just have to look at the rules. So for us, if I'm like really dictating their hours and what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera, they fall under the employee hat. So then if I'm, if I'm paying them as an employee, because I run four businesses, so um, am I paying them as an employee through Body Love Cafe or am I paying them as an employee through Functional Medicine Academy or am I paying them elsewhere? Um, you sort of have to figure that out. But as far as the tasks they do, um, you know, you might have a, a personal business assistant VA who really helps you in a number of categories and there's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So it just depends on what their capabilities are and what you need and, and how you train them. And as far as separate accounting, the, the accounting that needs to be separate is based on legal entities. Um, so if you're doing payroll, so Body Love Cafe and Functional Medicine Academy, for example, are, are two different corporations. And because of that, they have to have different QuickBooks online. And I highly recommend QuickBooks Online. Um, it's a little bit of a pain to get set up, but once it's set up, it makes life so much easier. And they have a full payroll service um, and they have an HR connected to it. So there's a lot of uh, benefits to using that. And so because I have employees with different corporations, I have to have more than one QuickBooks. But then if I have a... Um, you know, if you have a business that's a Schedule C, right, as a sole proprietor, um, you could, you know, have that in the same QuickBooks as something else and just separate them out. So it's what I call sort of above the line and below the line for profit and loss. Um, and that's something I, I might be able to demo better in a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but you do want separate bank accounts for each business, even if it is a sole proprietor. And it's easy enough now to go to the bank and get a um, business account that should be no cost um, and maybe get a few checks printed for that. But otherwise, as much as possible, keep that um, business banking as clean as possible. And ideally, have a credit card that you use for each business. Now, if you're brand new starting out and that's not possible, that's fine. You just need to be able to track it. That's where QuickBooks comes in handy. And these are personal expenses over here and these are business expenses. But the best practice would be your Citibank card is for your business and your uh, Capital One card is for your personal life and your groceries or something like that. That's best practices. Um, I highly recommend credit cards with cash back. And the other thing I want to recommend is that you start building business credit. So you get a Duns and Bradsheet Street number um, and you can actually, in fact, Capital One, Spark has a good business credit card. Um, now, if you don't start this way, don't even worry about it. This is over your head, skip it. But for those of you that are a little bit farther along, um, NAV, N-A-V is a good resource and you wanna start building business credit so you can, um, so you can actually get loans or credit if you need it at some point in your business name. Especially, this is an important lesson over the last year with COVID, when you think about, um, when you um, think about business leases. So I'm thinking of a colleague I know, an acupuncturist who was on the line for, personally on the line 
for a build out of a clinic and had a um, chiropractor and a psychotherapist and massage therapists and other acupuncturists and I can't even remember who else, but a, b a bunch of people renting space. Well, when COVID happened, they all left and then left her uh, in this situation. And a lot of people, you know, ended up going bankrupt because they didn't have anyone to rent to. And that's a really hard lesson to learn where you have a personal guarantee versus a business guarantee on a lease. Um, so, and not getting caught in contracts like that and spending money. I mean, that's definitely one of my specialties. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, Sarah, first time watching, is it possible to get the links from previous recordings? Yes, probably the easiest thing is to email Rochelle, but let me see if I can put a couple in for you right now. Um, so I gave you Rochelle's email. Um, let's see, here is the case review link. It's sort of hidden from the public, so I just give it to you guys so you have it. Um, that's one where I talked about, it was a case review, an actual patient with Dutch hormone testing, GI map, um, intestinal barrier. My, my favorite, you know, leaky gut test includes, um, it's a blood test for uh, zonulin, DAO, diamine oxidase, um, histamine and lipopolysaccharides. So that's my favorite one. And it had an allergy 88 test. Um, this is the Dutch one. These might get squished together when I post more than one thing. Sometimes that happens. Um, that's the Dutch one. This is the treatment guide booklet. So if you haven't gotten this from Dutch, this is a wonderful resource you can just grab for free. Um, this is let's see as I'm pulling it up this is the link here to that freebie I told you about that has um, one of the ways you can look for your ideal patient and gear around marketing, but it's that personality profiling. Uh, there's a section on staffing for hiring staffing, their strengths and their weaknesses. And then there's a practitioner to patient communication section. That was not even in the McGraw Hill book. I wrote that separately just for y'all because there's some awesome secrets in there, including, um, you know, your patients, even virtual, like on the phone or video, you can tell who they are and um, what to do if they get upset, like little tips and tricks for how to um, how to communicate with them and sort of diffuse uh, tense situations. The book's still in print. It's on Amazon. You're welcome to get it. But, um, you know, and I don't want to discourage you from buying books, but honestly, that freebie um, has a fair amount of detail. The book is called, it has my, I told you I was a single mama forever, so it has my maiden name, but um, how to read a client from across the room. If you search for that on Amazon, you'll find the actual book, um, but in that freebie is the unique uh the unique practitioner patient section. And then let's see if I can find that coaching link. Uh, let's see. And I can give you the SIBO masterclass if you want that one too. Um, oh, here I found it. Okay, so I did a live two hour coaching call. People asked a lot of different questions. Here's that link. You're welcome to check it out. And then this is the SIBO one. So if you're interested in SIBO and gut health, this is quite detailed. Um, and there's a great handout. So right under the video is a very detailed handout. Make sure you snag the handout. And one more thing you might like, and this one you're welcome to borrow and, you know, make it your own. 
if you find it helpful. This is a freebie I use for patients. It's called 15 Darn Things Keeping You Fat or Sick. One of the things that's fun about something like that is you can um, create one, you know, customize it for yourself. Maybe it's a different topic. Maybe yours is just about hormones, you know, whatever fits your practice, but have something like that. And um, it has wonderful information, but you can also put in some verbiage about um, yourself or your practice. And then the thing I like about that is it lists the 15 things but then at the end what I did was um, it's like on page 18 or something I listed what's what's the testing what's the functional medicine testing you would get for each of the 15 things so if a patient is reading it and thinking you know oh uh, gosh number four leptin resistance that sounds like me or uh, number 13 estrogen dominance uh, that sounds like me. Um, or, you know, uh, what else? Um, dealing with chemicals, they can just look and see what the typical um, testing, testing would be. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. Let me see what other questions are in here. So hopefully I got you, Sarah. If I missed anything, let me know. Um, where do I look for regulations of staff, employee, and independent contractors? So that's where something like um, using QuickBooks Online is helpful because they partnered with a company called Mammoth, and that's a human resource company. So instead of paying extra for advice from Mammoth, it's included with your QuickBooks Online payroll service. So that's where we get most of it, and then we don't have to pay extra for an attorney. That, that's the short and long of it. Um, and mammoth should be able to give you specific information to your state. Otherwise, you can start, you know, Googling and looking up regulations for your state. And then there's certain attorneys that specialize in functional medicine. And um, there's one attorney, those who are going through our functional medicine academy, I actually have an attorney doing them a guest bonus call, no charge for those students um, in the late summer, early fall uh, to answer questions. So that's always fun. Um, but sometimes you can interview them. I've used three different ones and they can be dramatically different, not only in their advice, which is super irritating, but their price and their, to use a term we know, I'd say bedside manner. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see. Oh, thank you. Good. I'm glad you like the class. Um, let's see. Here's a good question. Uh, many functional medicine practitioners seem to market themselves as being comprehensive and able to treat everything and everybody with a wide range of services and practitioners. For those starting out, is this necessary or can you track well based on a more limited offering. Yes, there's no wrong per se. Um, and those who make it seem like they can treat everything, you know, be careful about using the word treat, right? Because of FDA regulations and how some of the natural protocols and supplements are regulated or not regulated. Um, and for the most part, the FDA um, considers only a drug. So for those of you coming from prescribing world, only a drug like metformin is the only thing that can treat diabetes, even though we know um, changes in lifestyle and weight loss and balancing blood sugar and certain herbs and supplements can be not only so effective for blood sugar balancing and diabetes, but in many cases reverse type two diabetes. But you wanna always err on the side of caution when it comes to claims. And you don't need to make wild claims in order to get patients. So sticking with, you know, instead of treat words like support or, you know, maybe at most remedies, but I'll use support and protocols and um, use disclaimers and agreements that are signed everywhere that say, you know, this is, because I may be doing something natural that isn't FDA regulated, you know, as soon as I give a supplement that supports blood sugar balance and use that instead of insulin, 
uh, the FDA considers that the wild, wild west, which sounds crazy, but uh, that's just the way, just the way it is. So, um, so anyway, as soon as something like um, that happens, I just put disclaimers in everything, you know, we're working with the natural physiological processes in the body. Um, we're not treating any particular disease. Do people have conditions and they get well? Sure, all the time. Um, but really, we're just trying to look at their body as a whole. Um, more than anything, we are educating them. So we're that translator and that communicator and making those connections for the patient, um, making lifestyle recommendations. It's not just supplements and labs, but it's food and sleep and movement and meditation and maybe body work referrals in office or out of office. So you don't have to offer everything and they don't even have to be your tools to be able to say, you know, you might want to consider acupuncture or, um, you know, or maybe we need to refer you to a GI doc. We need a, we need a GI in your life. Um, or, you know, I, I look at this rash and I want a dermatologist to look at it uh, who look, who does nothing but look at skin all day long. So things like that. So I think it's more accurate for functional medicine providers to market themselves as, you know, whole body health. Yes, we're going to consider you as a whole. And that I think is very legitimate to market at. It doesn't mean that you have to treat everything or even give a protocol for everything. You just need to understand that everything's connected, right? You need to know um, that everything's connected head to toe, that it's not just physical, but it's also mind and it's also spiritual and it's also you know, stress at work and um, their living environment and you know, generational trauma, you know, ACE, adverse childhood, uh, events or adverse childhood experiences, all of those things. Now, if, if that still makes you feel uncomfortable starting, then it's perfectly fine to say, I feel like I can nail it in the land of thyroid. Or, you know, I really have a passion for weight loss and that's where I'm going to start. That's fine. It's just the thing I would say is please consider if you feel like you're going to expand later, then I would still name your business something more broad and that give yourself a broader umbrella. And then it's fine to focus your marketing efforts on one topic that brings a lot of people in. I just want room that later, so let's say you started with weight loss, later once you're nailing the weight loss, and you say, you know what, I really want to bring in thyroid, it's easy peasy to add it to your website. And then later, you're, you know, nailing weight loss and thyroid, and you say, you know, I'm really ready to tackle more of these gut health conditions, you can bring that in. So that's the thing I would suggest. But if you know yourself well enough that this one topic is your end all be all, you're never going to change, then just set it up that way. I have some practitioners, um, you know, their license, I'm, I'm thinking of a PhD in particular, uh, and the world they were coming from, of uh, you know, psychotherapy and whatnot, that maybe um, specializing in the brain, that, that's going to be their umbrella, and the things that fit under that. That's fine. That works for them. Okay, is there any other question? Otherwise, I think I'm going to move on because I have a lot to do. Um, if you need anything, please reach out. Let's see, what forms of media did you use to market, obtain clients when first starting out? Did you have your website set up and labs? It's a great question. Um, just all the experience I had had coaching others, um, I knew that I wanted a website that I could make changes to without having to hire someone else. So using something like Wix or Squarespace, something where I could easily make a change was key. I also knew that I wanted to set up a website and have it be good enough that I did not need to make changes for a while. 
So ideally, I wanted a website that I could leave alone for a year or two or three because I was going to be busy building a practice. And you, when you first do marketing, you want high return marketing, whatever your effort is. Um, you want zero to, uh, to low cost and you want high return. So you don't like I didn't I did not email anyone or do a newsletter for years. It's a waste of time. And a lot of people spend money on that and they're focused on that. And that's that's a bad idea. You have to know marketing inside and out to know all these things. But that's a great way to waste a lot of money. Um, so there's no way I was going to do that. So I built my website um, before I started with just the basics that I teach um, so it could last and um, had a couple blog posts up so I could send patients to it. I wasn't even going to do blogs over and over again because with the loss of net neutrality, the chance like my previous business, I had a very high Alexa rating and the website got found a lot. That's very different nowadays. So anyone who tries to tell you otherwise, that's inaccurate. Most people are going to find your website because they're looking for it. So that's another thing, especially in the beginning, spending money on SEO in most cases is a waste of money. So just setting it up right so it can sit is key. And, that, and that's what I did. Um, so people who wanted to find it, or if I sent them to it here, go read more. It was ready. It's like an online business card and it's for credibility, listing your services, scheduling, that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's some CEO you can do that's completely free that can be specific to your area. The more specific you make it, the better it will work. Um, and that's what you want to do for money and cost in the beginning. And then for labs, I did blood labs in the beginning and I just started adding them as I went on. When I work with new practitioners now, I teach them like the five basic labs to have. So within a couple sessions, they are completely confident in ordering them, what they mean and what to do uh, when they get them. Um, those who don't do private coaching, but they do Functional Medicine Academy, I talk about labs all the way through every course. Every time I teach a class, I talk about the lab that's related to the content. So I'm always talking about labs. Um, but you, you know, you can get started. It's just some of those those basics. You know, who are you? What's your name? What what's your entity you're going to start with? You can start as a sole proprietor. I did. So if you don't, if you don't even have the budget to start out as a corporation, that's fine. You know, there's always pros and cons, but if it's a financial, financial thing, that's fine. I incorporated later. Um, like I said, I did it with zero money and zero loans, not even a credit card was how I built it. And I, my first year doing less than seven hours of patient visits in functional medicine, nutrition. Uh, the first year I think was 250 or 300,000. So you just have to know how to do it um, and, and set it up right. And then you just, keep, you just keep growing from there. And with each expansion, then I would you know, add a new thing or new staff member or do the corporation or tweak the website or things like that. So I let the business and the growth and the funds drive things forward. I'm a big uh, fan of that. Um, but you can absolutely start with sort of some basics and then all of your lifestyle tools, a few key supplements, a few key labs, you're ready to rock and roll. If you did nothing else except help people eat better, find a weight that worked for their body, help them out with some basic digestion. This is why health coaches have a, a, have a role in functional medicine. Everything I just said, a health coach could do, right? And uh, if you did just that, you're still helping people. That's incredibly valuable. And then as your knowledge and your comfort and your practice grows and your funds grow um, and also your 
experience grows, you're going to get more complex patients and those people help drive your growth. You know, you don't have to start out as a Lyme expert. You don't have to start out as a SIBO expert, um, but just meet people where they are, do what you can, you know, be ready to refer when you need to. You don't have to know everything. Um, a lot of things you'll look up and learn along the way, but you, you know, you get started and, um, and it's great. It's, it's a great, it's a great business. It's great to help people. You'll never get bored. There's so many opportunities um, and it's really fascinating information. So, um, you know, what a wonderful business. Okay, I'm going to go because I have two more interviews to do today, but I hope it was helpful. Uh, we'll get the recording out next week. If you need something while I'm gone, um, please email. I'll just do it one more time. Rochelle, uh, my assistant, who's holding it all together while I'm gone. That's her email. Um, otherwise, you know, info at Doc Zachary, she'll check that too. Thank you. Thanks for the messages. Um, and hopefully I will just see some of you um, when I'm back in June. We'll do some fun classes then. And those of you I'm coaching with, you have your homework assignments for May. So kick some butt in May so we can take it to the next step in June. And um, thanks for spending a Sunday with me. Bye everyone.